On the North Atlantic organized track system, more than 2,000 airplanes cross the Atlantic Ocean daily on their way to North America or Europe. Have you ever wondered how pilots communicate and navigate while in flight? The intriguing fusion of satellite communication, early 1900s low-tech and contemporary digital messaging occurs during transatlantic transmission. Let's explore how pilots were able to navigate through the North Atlantic Ocean's invisible highway. It promises to be an adventurous journey. The North Atlantic Organized Track System, NATs, is a system of weather-optimized routes across the Atlantic created by air traffic managers in Gander, Newfoundland and Prestwick, Scotland, in response to the twice-daily stampedes. NATs resemble a multi-lane, one-way sky expressway. Every day, the tracks are swapped out to give the planes the best possible paths. Every day, a track NOTAM notice to airmen, commonly referred to as a track message, is posted online with the definition of the track. The published tracks are used by pilots and airline dispatchers to schedule the day's flights. To make it simple to refer to on a flight plan, each track is identified by a letter. Tracks headed west are designated A, B, C, D and so on. The track labels for eastbound trains are W, X, Y and Z at the end of the alphabet. Every airline asks for a track that will maximize fuel economy for their aircraft. It tagged and highlighted the tracks of the day on a North Atlantic plotting map using a track message. The crew requests a route clearance from air traffic control about half an hour before the airplane takes off. The majority of domestic and trans-Pacific flights are given a full route plan by ATC to the crew. The route clearance for transatlantic flights includes the start and finish of domestic segments of the flight. Every aircraft lifted off the ground and flew northeast toward Nova Scotia. It's time to consider the oceanic clearance around an hour after departure. All permissions were given out verbally over the radio a few years ago. It's a lot simpler now that we have digital communications. Aircraft will be assigned a track and receive oceanic clearance through the ACR's text messaging and data system. A rebuttons click later, the request is roughly 90 minutes before arriving at the point of oceanic entry. Getting an oceanic clearance from Gander can take several minutes to an hour. All demands must be fulfilled by the controllers, who must also ensure that the planes are properly spaced along the tracks. The cockpits chime, and the oceanic clearance is ready to view after a brief wait. Oceanic controllers are responsible for ensuring that all aircraft are kept securely apart by distance and altitude, even in the absence of radar, over the ocean. Controllers rely on pilots to report their position regularly because they are unable to see the aircraft. For the controller to create a three-dimensional image of all the traffic, an aircraft's position, speed and altitude are sent in a position report. Back then, at every 10 degrees of longitude, pilots used an HF radio to report their position. It is now a lot simpler and digital. Every member of the flight crew will log into the Gander Center using ADS CPDLC as soon as the aircraft reaches Porty, the oceanic entry point. The position information is generated by the ADS Automatic Dependent Surveillance System. Without disturbing the crew, it enables controllers to request and receive digital reports from the aircraft's navigation system. Controller Pilot Data Link Communications is referred to as CPDLC. It facilitates text-based requests and clearances between controllers and pilots. ADS and CPDLC are ideal for use across oceans since they can transmit data via SATCOM satellite, VHF radio, and HF radio. All meteorological models, including wind speeds, are integrated into aircraft systems, according to Jeff Edison, manager of NAV Canada's Gander Area Control Centre. Tracks heading eastward are designed to maximise the benefits of tailwinds generated by the jet stream, a swiftly moving airstream that circles the Earth and reaches speeds of up to 200 miles per hour, 322 kph. For instance, they designate a track that is precisely in the middle of the jet stream if it crosses the Atlantic without making any zigzags or zags. Every aircraft will want to use that track. Occasionally, this means distributing the advantages of the eastbound tailwind across two or three tracks. It refers to those as the main tracks. Five, maybe as many as 14, Recordings are usually made each day. All it takes to identify them is a letter. The southernmost eastbound skyway is Z for Zulu, followed by Y, X, W and so forth, until all of the tracks for the day have labels. Depending on the conditions, the tracks can stretch from 300 to 700 miles, 480 to 1,130 kilometers, in a north to south direction. Tracks that head westward are intended to minimize headwinds by staying out of the jet stream. 
beginning in the north is Track A, or Alpha, while the remaining skyways are arranged in a southerly direction. From Boston, Basnet flew northeast to get on the right track for his journey. All aircraft are programmed to reach a fix, or a point in space, that serves as the entry point for aircraft assigned track once pilots communicate with Air Traffic Control ATC. The tracks enter and exit at a series of navigation fixes that stretch across both sides of the Atlantic. Each is represented with a pronounceable, if frequently meaningless, five-letter word. While Moglo and Lekva are close to Ireland, Jupi and Iberg are two fixes off the coast of Newfoundland. Aircraft cruises in the middle of a fictitious box after leaving the coast of the Atlantic on its designated course and altitude to ensure its safe departure from different aircraft. Aircraft must verify that their navigation systems and instruments meet the strict requirements that provide the most precise aircraft separation before they are allowed to fly on an oceanic track. Since the advent of sophisticated navigational tools and protocols, aircraft operating on the over the superior OTS system have been able to fly five minutes roughly 40 miles behind the aircraft in front of them. There's a 1000 foot safety zone above and below, and on each side there's a 25 mile distance from the nearest aircraft. Aircraft that fly against the flow, like freight planes heading to Europe throughout the day, are also subject to these separation regulations. Geographically, divide the aircraft routes from the OTS as a safety measure. On occasion, though, a random flight heading east will cross paths with a random airplane heading west for a portion of their journey. They are at least 1,000 feet apart in altitude. The view from the flight deck windows can be the greatest seat in the house, especially with so many planes flying in a huge loose formation. During the day, kilometers away, one can see contrails, which are water crystals made of condensed exhaust vapor. And at night, navigation lights are very visible, according to Basnet. It is an amazing sight to see a big plane like an A380 flying 1,000 feet over you in the other direction at a closing speed of over 1,000 miles per hour. While high-frequency radios allow workers and controllers to communicate across oceans, most communication takes place via secure satellite data links. Each flight automatically transmits its position every 14 minutes. Every time a flight passes every 10 degrees of longitude, a location report is also necessary. Additionally, crews will use the data link to request adjustments to the track or altitude, possibly in the event of a rough patch. In conclusion, simply elevating the airplane by 1,000 feet might alleviate the situation, as can avoiding flying near the edge of a jet stream, which can occasionally resemble a cobblestone road. Similar to a party line between planes, Pilots operating the OTS also communicate with one another over a shared radio channel, saying things like, pilots discuss ride tales of turbulence or anything else interesting with other pilots. If you enjoyed this video, kindly hit the subscribe and like button for more. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you will be notified when we upload new videos. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.